welcome to Fiber Town. I am Emily. I am on episode 45, and it is December 10th, 2013. Um, it is in the afternoon, which is a strange thing. Here's Alice. Because we are home on a snow day today, and so I am not in my kitchen as usual. I'm in my living room in front of my Christmas tree. As is Alice, and we've had a great day so far. We've been outside. Um, Alice is this is the first real snow she's played in. She loves it. Um, she likes to have balls, throw, snowballs thrown, and she'll go and catch it and then rip it up. And she's pawing in the snow and whatnot. Do you want to shake? Thank you. So yeah, we've had a very lovely morning. The whole family is home. My husband is a teacher, and so he is off, to, off work today as well. Um, it's a Tuesday, as I said. I have some stuff going on tomorrow, which is my usual recording day. So I will be out of the house, not recording tomorrow. But I've got some stuff to show you all. So let's get started um, with the rundown of the show. So um, first things <laughs> that I skipped. I am Fibertown on Instagram, and I'm Chain of Fools on Ravelry. And let's see. We have, if you're new to the show, hey... Hey everybody, how y'all doing? Um, I wanted to tell you guys about the results of the poll. No, all the cookies are gone. The cookies are all gone, I swear. The results of the poll we did last week regarding the FO thread. Did you want me to uh, do the drawing beforehand uh, and allow for chatter in the thread or do it the way we have been doing it, which is no chatter in the thread and I do the drawing live on the show. Live on the show. And Overwhelmingly, people wanted me to change it up and allow for chatter in the FO thread every month. And that is a thread, don't wiggle the table, where you can win a, a pattern on Ravelry. Just by um, a random number generator, if one of your FOs gets picked, you get a pattern. So I'm going to change that thread to allow for chatter. And what I'll do is just random number generate until I hit an actual FO picture. Okay. I'll go ahead and change that in the December thread. All right, so we have show and tell today. We have whips, we have spinning, we have acquisitions, and we have miscellaneous. And it's a bit of a shorty, so hopefully um, we'll do this in 20 minutes or less today. Alice, you're welcome to come back up, but the cookies are all gone. Okay, if you want to see Alice in action in the snow, she I put a, vid a video on Instagram, so go and take a look if you're curious. She's wearing her Noro sweater. I am wearing... Um, Something I, I don't, I haven't worn very often. I knit this a year ago, and this is out of Julie Spins um, BFL Silk 50/50 Blend Handspun, and it's the Moonlight colorway. Look at that! I made this up. It's a, it's a, it's so many things. It's a capelet. It's a cowl, and it's a snood. Is that a snood? No, no, no. That's called something else. Oh, it'll come to me. I've forgotten what this is called when it's, it's around your head like that. A wimple. It's a wimple. Awesome, awesome word, right? Okay. So that's what I'm wearing. Um, I love Julie Spins. She's got an Etsy shop and a Art Fire shop. She has two shops. Okay, so FOs. Holiday mini. I have finished the socks for my boy. And I'm calling these <clears throat> I'm calling these the Dubby Wub socks. That's my nickname for him. He's my Dubby Wubs. One of my nicknames for him. He has so many. Both of my kids have for the first year of their life, I don't think I called them by their first name. Called them things like Fatty, and Goose, and Dubby Wubs. Anyway, this is from Lane Servinia. And Lane Servinia in the Forever Base. And it's just a lovely gray, white, charcoal um, self-striping. It's a lot of fun. I think it's a workhorse yarn. It's an Italian company. Uh, the colorway was just a number. So I knit my regular sock pattern, which is top down, heel flap, bottom gusset, yada, 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 on a US one and a half, 2.5. Alice thinks they smell good. Alice is a sock lover. She, she will snag socks and take them into her lair. Okay, so that's FO number one. FO number two is still wet. It is a creeper hat. 
for my nephew who is here playing with my son right now. Told them not to come in here. Um, yes, he is a Minecraft fan, big time. So I got some Galway leftovers from my friend Leanne. Thank you, Leanne. And I was worried that he, you know, he's not, oh, he does not come from a wool-loving family, I'll just say, except for his aunt. So I was a little worried the Galway would be very wooly, but it's nice, at least for me. I hope it's it's going to be doable for him. So yeah, these are little creepers, which is something in this game he likes, Minecraft. So um, what is this, this pattern? Oh, it's called I think Creepers All Around. I'll link to it in the show notes. I, I did my own decreases. The hat, the hat pattern has you do something different, but I just I cast on 80 stitches. It's a free pattern. And when I did the decreases, I just knit eight, knit to knit two together for the first round. And did my decreases that way. And it's just, the stitches are really lovely in Galway. Isn't it nice when you get a, a perfect marriage of needle and yarn and gauge? Gotta love it. So the pattern tells you to do these creepers in Tarja style. You're like, what? I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna trap my floats, y'all. So that's what I did. Um, probably I trapped them every, every three stitches when I needed to, and you didn't need to on every row, so it was just a couple of rows you had to be more careful on. And on the inside, looks pretty good, there it is, so, oh, my son wants one of these, so I might have to find more green yarn. Yay, so that was a stash buster. And yeah, the black yarn was just from stash. Um, so that's it for FOs. I have an almost FO. Let me show it to you. I have my daughter's little print socks, and these are out of opal. And you've seen the first one's been done for quite a while. Oh, I don't even have the first one with me. Better look for that. But this is the second, and I'm on the toe decreases. I'm using my carbons. Just dropped one of them. Carbons, one and a half. DPNs. I really like these DPNs as far as the DPNs go. I do not like the carbon circulars, but the DPNs, awesome. Yeah, uh, so US one and a half, 2.5 millimeters, and this again is my regular sock pattern. Um, 64 stitches. She's almost got a bigger foot than I do. So if she hates them, I can wear them. All right, I don't have a lot left over. I suppose I could do ankle socks for me. And I know the lighting is weird today. I'm kind of orangey, I'm like a oopa loopa. Hello. But that's okay. These, the W Web socks, were over 52 stitches. Don't look at me. Go away. I'm not used to recording with people in the house. I'm self conscious. Okay, alrighty. So, socks, 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 socks. I cast in one more hat. This is for my littlest nephew. It's the fish, dead or alive, fish hat, dead or alive, and we have cast on. That is it. Uh, what size needle am I using? Like sevens, maybe? Sixes? Oh my gosh, I don't know. I'll tell you next week. I can't see the needle. Something like that. And I'm using the Sirdar Country DK leftovers from my son's Farrell sweater that I knit him. And significant leftovers and it's lovely soft yarn once it's washed up. It is a DK and this pattern calls for worsted but my little nephew has a, has a small head so I think it's gonna work out fine. Um, I'm just gonna stripe these. I think it'll look very cute and yeah speaking of that Fair Isle sweater my son is actually wearing it now. We had we had some arguments about when he was gonna wear it. He's six. He's starting to argue. Um, I have noticed this in my daughter when she was six. It's like, who is this child? And where is my baby? And he's starting to do that. Um, just, you know, regular stuff. But he's like, I'm only going to wear it when it snows. And I'm thinking, well, you may never wear it then. I got him to wear it by just putting my foot down one day. But now he's worn it two days in a row. So he likes it a lot. Um, and it's got the kangaroo pocket. It's very handy. Okay, one more work in progress. And I will not lie to you folks, this thing, it is 
jacking up my life physically and emotionally. It is the Advent scarf. This is being done out of Swan's Island Organic Merino fingering, which is fantastic. Um, and it's on US 6s. I'm using Addy Lace, my, some Addy Lace 24 inch I have. And I started out really loving this. See, and I'm modifying this. This is the 2012 version. Um, and I'm definitely modifying it. I'm doing like half repeats. Um, just because I don't have, I'm using fingering rather than lace. It is a light fingering, but I've been weighing it as I go. And look how much, I think I'm down to an ounce and three quarters. I think it was three and a half ounces to start. And I'm, I've only knit through day nine and not, okay, you two, I'm dead serious. Talk to daddy. Sorry, that's mean fiber down. <laughs> um, they were trying to spy on me. I'm not having that. Anyway, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, once I hit day seven, which is not coincidentally my mother's birthday, and I was helping to put together a party for her, things started to go wrong. Do you see that? This, this area in here? Um, it looks like there's really a nothing happening. I could not get the stitch count right, day seven and eight, I don't know what happened to me. Um, I assume this is the corrected version, it says corrected up top and it's been out a year, so I think it's me, I think it was user error and not the pattern, just just this stuff here, you know, everything else is very um, distinct and stitch counts worked out, I had two days of blah, 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 blah. So I just cut my losses, and I'm doing things a little bit differently now. Um, I don't know what it is about this particular project, but knitting it is affecting my whole right side, from about here to about here. My hands are fine, just especially my neck. Um, I, it's a combination of having to do it, although honestly I don't have to do this, come on. It's supposed to be fun. Um, ha well, it's, it's a bit of an obligation that I've made to myself. I can stop at any time. Um, but there's the obligation part of it. And then it must have to do with the needle size and the yarn and maybe the way I'm holding my body as I'm knitting it. <sighs> Nothing else is affecting me that I'm knitting like this is. So anyway, I've knit through day nine, although this is really just like a third of the day nine pattern. I had to stop there. I just, I just don't have time in the um, in the day with everything else I'm doing. So it's going to be quite modified, but I'm taking heart because day seven and eight are going to be most likely in the back of my neck. So should be fine. Um, between each day, there is a small, um, sort of spacer repeat between each lace pattern and it's eight rows long. I'm, I decided I'm only going to do four, and I'm not going to do the yarn over eyelet row until I get back to the last, what, six days? And then I'll have it, so I'll have it the same, the spacer rows will be the same on both ends, so it'll be symmetrical when it's wrapped around my neck, but I'm not doing these gigantic spacer rows between the middle, in the middle part of the advent. So that will be less knitting and less yarn, so wish me luck. I'm going to start day 10 later, we'll see how it goes. But the fabric is lovely, um, and I really did like it in the beginning, so hopefully I can get back in that groove. And it'll help once my, my holiday knitting is done. Last year I did zero holiday knitting, zero, and I love that. But this year I just, I got it in my head that I wanted to. Um, the very last whip is not even cast on, it's a hoe. You all see, you've seen this already. This is the Patton's Croy sock in the blue rag. And it's for my husband and it's, the first sock is done. The second sock is not cast on. It will be as soon as I finish the opal little print sock. Okay, that's that. I have spinning. Um, I have one ounce of spinning done. It is a gourmet stash puny in um, a Game of Thrones, like, Early on, I think I got this this summer at Uniquities. 
Let me show you all. At the Uniquities Fiber Farmer's Market. It is Don't Wake the Dragon. That's a pretty good representation of the color right there. It is um, plums, purples, charcoal grays, and blacks. And it is sparkly. And I don't have the card with me. I can't tell you the fiber content now. But I will next week when I show you the finished skein. Um, this is on, done on my ladybug. It is fairly thin. You will see that? Very thin. Um, I decided to spin it all and I'm going to do Navajo ply because why not? I've been back to practicing my Navajo plying lately so we'll see how much I get. I tend to get about I've done all my gourmet stash punis three plies so far and that's because I have I want them all the same for the Albers cowl so this is going to be a different kind of three ply because my others have been traditionally three plied um, so it'll be interesting to see how much yardage I get here um, doing this on my wheel as opposed to on my supported Tibetan. Um, typically I get around 70 yards of a three ply, 60 to 70 yards. I think that most I've gotten is like 75, 78. So one last look. I will let this rest and ply it tomorrow. Um, I do have some acquisitions that have to do with spinning. On Small Business Saturday, I decided I was going to make a purchase at Meduseld. And I had my eye on two things. Oh, I had meant to look up something in the Fleece and Fiber Source book. Darn it. What I had meant to look up was Gotland. This is four ounces of Gotland roving. Is it top or... Mm -hmm. It's fairly aligned. Hmm. It looks like it looks like it could be very close to the top. I think this is combed. Anyway, it's lovely. It's these are both natural colors. Um, see how parallel everything is. So this is. Um, I don't think this is from Meduseld's sheep, but she has it in stock. So I really like it. Four ounces of this beautiful gray. And it is more of a gray. It's reading a bit. There we go. It was reading brown in the other lighting. Beautiful shiny stuff. Um, and I need to get in the fleece and fiber source book and look that up. I believe it's Scandinavian. And the other one is something else I've never spun. This is Shetland in a Moret color. Natural reddish brown. Four ounces. Oh, it smells like lanolin. What does the Gotland smell like? I haven't smelled it. Gotland does not smell like lanolin at all. Oh, wait. Very faintly. Hmm. Shetland, you smell like lanolin. Well, that'll be good for my hands when I'm spinning. Make them soft. I think this wants to be something cabled, don't you? I think so. Okay, I'm almost done, y'all. I just want to talk to you about one thing. I have started watching a new podcast, and I'm really liking it. It's called Hudson Valley Knits, and it's by Amy. She's the hostess, and um, she's um, got a Ravelry group, Hudson Valley Knits. She's Memers something, Memers 66, maybe, on Instagram. So... Check her out. She knits good stuff. She's got a prize drawing going for gifting knit-alongs. Um, I really like her style. So that is it. The sun has come out. I think the snow is going to melt. Um, and yeah. Next week, wish me luck with my advent scarf, my holiday knitting. And yeah, until then, you, you guys take care. And Alice is long gone. I think she's outside again with kiddos. So until next week, take care. Bye-bye.